bar images. Um, we can select it here, a different path, but this one that is recommended is quite good. So, but this the Windows doesn't recommend to save them on the same uh, place where you store the system files. So this volume selected is also Windows System Volume for the best performance and data reliability. The remote installation folder should be stored on a separate volume and where possible on a separate disk for this, from the system volume. We don't have another separate disk so we're just going to keep this disk say yes. Because this is a DHCP server as well, the server that we installed in the WDS, we have to keep these two ticked. As it says in there, if DHCP is running on this server, check both of the following checkboxes and use DHCP tools to add appropriate pixie option to all DHCP and DHCP v6 scopes. Click next. And how are we gonna respond to the client machine? We don't do not respond to any client machine, there's a choice there. Respond only to known client machines or respond to all client computers, known or unknown. Require administrator approval for unknown computers. For this exercise, I'm going to untick that, so I'm going to respond to all client computers, known and unknown. Click next, and the installation is going to start. Okay, the installation has completed. It says the service did not respond to the start of the control request in timely fashion. I um, need to start it again, so click finish. And you can see there that the server is not started, so right click on the server and click all tasks and then start. If there's a problem, it says here, successfully started Windows deployment services. If you have a problem, and we see a green tick there, if you have a problem to start in the DHCP, uh, sorry, WDS server, you have to go to the properties and in advanced here, make sure that you, uh, you can communicate with the DC. For example, you select here uh, WDS, should use the following server for domain controller and global catalog, and you have to browse for your domain controller. So for me, it would be LON. Yep, it's gonna find it, so this is it and then the catalog server as well. Okay, so you have to select if you can't start the server. But for us, I'm gonna cancel this because it did start, fine, cancel that. Okay, so we have a WDS installed. So now, since we have this server installed, since we have this WDS server installed, now we have to create uh, some, uh, well, add a boot image uh, capture image, install image, and so on. Right, so a few, a few images that we have to add. A boot image. So a boot image is the server, the new machines, they're going to need that image. So these new machines, they're going to need an image to boot from, right? Because they don't have any operating system. These machines, they have operating system, they don't need that image. But if you want to capture the image, then we're going to need a capture image. So once we install this uh, client machine, we make it perfect, like a master copy, then when we want to deploy this image to the WDS, we're going to use a capture image. All the images that we store on the WDS, they are called install image. Like here we would have uh, Windows 7, um, Windows 8, for example, uh, server 2012, server 2008, and so on. These are these are called install images. Now we get these installed images from the capture. We capture in the installed images. Okay. So first thing we need to do is add the boot image. So if I go to WDS server and not install images. On the install images, we can get these inst install images from DVD as well. Okay, so if I go to WDS server, on the boot images, I will add a new boot image. The boot image is located on the DVD of uh, 2012. So I go to this PC. Okay, I don't have anything on the DVD drive. So I'm gonna put a virtual disk in 
So if I go to settings of this virtual machine, select DVD drive and add image file. The image is located on the C drive, ISO, and I put uh, Windows 2012. Click OK. OK, so I just added that image. That image just appeared here. So open. And then the location of that boot image is on the sources and it's boot.wim. If you want to install, like uh, put the install image, a default, whatever comes on the CD, you can just put on the install image that WIM file there as well. OK, so for now, we're going to put the boot image. Open. Next. Um, I can keep this uh, Windows uh, setup to say here, I'm going to write down boot. Boot image. Maybe 2012 R2. Just so we know what, what boot image is this. Okay. And next. I'm going to pause the video until when is this image is at. Oh, actually it's going quite fast, so don't need to pause it. Okay. As soon as I pause it, it starts. The selected image was successfully successfully added to the server. So finish, and we can see that we have a, a boot image. So Microsoft Windows boot image 2012 R2. Now this boot image is fine. Uh, even the Windows 8.1 or Windows 7, they can they can start from this boot image. Doesn't matter what what boot image you put in. The latest is better. So now when we get the brand new machines, they will take that boot image we just added. A boot image they will boot from that image but when we want to capture the image we're not going to use the boot image we're going to use the capture image but this capture image doesn't exist on the DVD so we have to create it the only place where we create it from is we create it from this boot image so if I right click this boot image I have a few choices well I can go to properties of that boot image I can go to disable export image replace the image and create capture image or create a discover image. The discover image is for the machines that they can't boot through the network. But for us, we're going to create a capture image. So create the capture image. And this, uh, we're going to call it um, capture image, capture image, so we can identify. And that's the description the same. We go to browse, where are we going to store this capture image? I'm just going to put it on the desktop so it's easy for me to find. And the file name, capture image. It says open, but it's really, that should say create or something else, but not open. Now we are creating this new capture image. Click next. Okay, now I'm going to pause the video because this does take a little bit of time. Okay, I've finished capturing the, uh, to create that capture image. It says here, the operation is complete. The image was created successfully. Um, we can add the image to WDS right now. I'm just going to click finish. I'm not going to take that. I'll do it manually. So finish. Even though we created the capture image, which is on the desktop, I'll put it on the desktop here. Now we need to add it to WDS. Um, so right click, add a boot image. It's called the boot image as well. So browse, go to the desktop here. I can see it there. It's a I'll capture image. So open that. And then next name. You can change the name and description, but that's good. Capture image is fine. So click next. And then now we add in, in the WDS. Okay, I'm gonna pause again. Okay, it's finished. The operation is complete. The selected image was successfully added to the server. So now we have a boot image and we have a capture image. Now if I go back to uh, paint. You can see that I got this too. I got the boot image that I'm going to use it for the new machines. And I got the capture image that I'm going to capture the old machines from. Right. So when I want to send the image to this client machine, uh, from this client machine to the server, I will use a capture image. And then when I want to deploy that, mach that uh, image to the new machines, the new machines that will use a boot image. Everything in here will be called install image. So as you can see now, Right now, we just have boot images. We don't have any install images there on our server. Okay, so 
we are halfway done. 